Hey guys, welcome to another scripting tutorial in Roblox. Uh, you've been asking me, I've actually gotten a lot of requests. Um, I've been surprised that a lot of people want to learn uh, how to do GUIs. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, they're pretty fun, they're pretty cool, they're a pretty cool thing to do. <laughs> I thought about trolling you guys and like holding off as long as possible before I did a tutorial on this, but then I changed my mind uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you guys will be glad that I did. Okay, so um, GUIs, first thing you want to understand, uh, or the first thing you need to do if you want to make GUIs, is you have to put what's called a screen GUI inside the starter GUI. So we can just search it in here and double click on that to put it in. So now we have a screen GUI. Why do we need to do this? I don't know. It's, I mean, it, it's convenient. You'll find that um, because what happens is... Uh, uh, you can have m uh, multiple of these screen GUIs, like you can have one for like uh, a special oxygen bar if you're if you're underwater or something and you wanted to do some kind of underwater uh, oxygen indicator. But we don't need to do that. We're just going to do something simple today um, because I'm just introducing GUIs, and we can just leave this called screen GUI. It doesn't matter what its name is. Just make sure it's uh, descriptive for what you want if you're gonna have multiple uh, screen GUIs. Uh, so inside of the screen GUI, uh, now is we can do whatever we want now. Um, first thing I'm gonna show you, I guess, is a text button. Or if we just search a button here, we can have an image button and a text button. Uh, image buttons, uh, obviously, you can use like decals uh, as button as uh, images and stuff. But we're just going to do a text button because I don't feel like, oh, hey, that's nice. That's a new feature. Um, I'm just going to do a text button because I don't feel like doing an image. Uh, yeah, before, when we put in a text button, it wouldn't even show up because we because it would just have a size of zero. Uh, but now that shows up, so that's actually surprised me. That's kind of nice. Uh, let's um, go down here. Uh, we can just leave this here, but let me show you actually some properties. <laughs> some properties of the text button. So we have its position. Uh, you'll notice it has four uh, four different it has four different zeros and it, it looks kind of complicated but once you understand it it's not that complicated at all. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you what this all means. So actually we should do size first. This might be a little more helpful. If we want to make like a um, Okay, I'm just going to show you. If we change the scale, it this ranges from 0 to 1, generally. You can make it go bigger than that and make it actually go off the screen. But um, you don't need to understand that right now. If I change the scale to 1 in the X, this button is going to, to span the entire, um, the entire screen uh, on the top. So that's what, um, that's what scale does. Offset, I think that's in pixels. So pixels, so like if we do, let's turn this back to, I think it was, what, 0 0.1? Nope, something less, 0 0.5, or 0 0.05? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that was at. Anyway. Um, oh, it already has an offset. Okay, so this was at 0. So it, it already has an offset set as well. What offset does, we can change, it's kind of hard to get the actual size of the screen. Pretty sure I'm not... Too big, too big of an expert with this. Let's put in 1,000 in the scale. Um, I get, what if I want to make this span the entire screen? Uh, okay, let's make this 1,200. Uh, that looks good, but it's probably off by a little bit. And in fact, if we were to, I think if we were to expand this, yep. See, there we go. It doesn't stretch with it. So, um, depending on what you're using, scale and offset can be. Uh, useful for different situations. Usually I use offset when I'm using image buttons so that it doesn't stretch the image and make it look all weird. Um, but I'm just gonna set the offset to 0 and the scale to 0 0.1. Hopefully that made, that all made sense. Um, the position we can just leave that as well. We've already got this. Uh, of course we have all the colors. We can change the background color um, I'm going to change that because I don't like white. White's a boring color. I'm going to change it to blue. 
Wait a minute. Oh, wait. That's the border color. Never mind. <laughs> White or okay, purple. Purple. Why not? I have a purple shirt. So I'm not wearing a purple shirt, but I have one. I don't know why a purple shirt is relevant. Anyway. <laughs> okay. You you wanna you wanna get into the the actual meat of this? I'm sure that's why you're here. So um to make a button work, what we're gonna make this do is change colors. I guess. Yeah, let's do that. So we want to put in on. We can use a local script or regular script. Uh, the difference between the two is um, you don't really have to understand the difference right now because this doesn't matter too much. But local scripts, um, it only only your own computer uh, knows what's going on. Um, when we uh, when the game runs, it's hard to explain. I'm not. Even, Never mind. <laughs> We're just gonna use a local script. You'll you'll understand it later. You can look on the Roblox wiki uh, for yourself if you want to understand the difference. But either one will work in this case. Um, so yeah. Um, okay. What do we do now? What colors do we want? Actually, we want let's let's make a change from blue blue to red. So we're gonna say, uh, oops. We're gonna say just to make things easy. Blue equals the uh, actually, let's go button equals script dot parent dot oh yeah script dot parent so button equals script dot parent you should know what that means um, if you watched my other tutorials if you haven't watched my tutorials uh, and and you're a beginner scripter I would rec re recommend you go uh, watch them so that you understand what I'm even talking about anyway uh, button equals script dot parent now we can just say button every time we want to get to the button. Uh, let's get its current color. So blue equals uh, button dot background color three. Yeah. Um, you would think it's just like button dot background color, but it has a three. Uh, if you look in the properties window, you'll see that background color three. Um, uh, make sure you have the three there because that's what it says here. So we gotta we gotta copy it. Um, and the reason it has a three is because it has three different values. Uh, it has uh, red, green, and blue. You'll understand what that um, what that what that means uh, if you've used uh, if you've drawn pictures or whatever using uh, using a certain. It's called an RGB. So never mind. <laughs> uh, okay, let let me let me explain. Oh, here we go. So like, see, red is seven. Green is 160 and blue is 255. It mixes all these colors together to get this blue. You'll notice that blue is the biggest color. Um, it's got a little bit of red, uh, but it's mostly blue, and that is why uh, the color that the button is is currently blue. Um, okay, so now we're, we're going to say red equals color 3.new. Um, the first one is we're gonna we're gonna set this to 100, or let's let's go 200, and zero zero because we don't need any green or blue. We could we could make it have a little bit of blue and green I guess just to nah. Or, yeah okay just a little bit just a little. Bit. All right now let me explain what this means. Uh, color three if you want to get uh, if you want to set a, um. Uh, a property like this, you'll see these like uh, um, you'll see these kind of properties sometimes in various in various objects. Uh, text button happens to uh, take a color three value is what it's called. Um, remember when we used vector three and we said like vector three dot new? It vector three took three different values, and <clears throat> so does color three. Uh, the first one represents red, second one represents green. And the last uh, argument represents blue. <clears throat> and I actually wrote this wrong. Uh, color, color 3 ranges from 0 to 1. So we're going to say 1 instead. Uh, I was thinking it ranged from 255. Uh, but it, it actually doesn't. Um, <clears throat> because that's how it is in like various programs. We're just going to set these to 0. Okay, so now we can easily change the the color of the button from blue to red. I hope I haven't been rambling too much. It sounds like I have, but um, yeah, I feel like it's been necessary. Okay, now we're gonna write our function. Normally, remember we would write um, 
our connection lines first. So if we wanted, remember, if we go back to Jimmy, if we go back to Jimmy here, and we said um, we want to make sure, or we, okay, last in my one tutorial, we wrote, we wrote this line first, Jimmy dot click detector dot mouse click. I think we wrote it first. I don't know, but I've done that um, in a lot of my tutorials. Uh, I feel like we know what we're doing enough so that we're going to write the function first. Um, so we're going to say function. Uh, so we're going to write out the function that we want to happen when the, when the button is clicked. And then I'll show you how to actually check for the button. Um, check for when the button is clicked. So function, uh, we're going to say change color. And it doesn't need anything in the parentheses, so just leave that. Um, change color. So now we have to check if it's red or um, if it's either red or blue. If it's blue, then it's going to change to red. Otherwise, if it's red, then it's going to change back to blue. So if um, button dot background color three is equal to remember we use two equal signs instead of just one is equal. Oh, I should probably zoom in. Ah, much better, much better. Okay. If background color 3 is equal to blue, and we can just say blue because um, we set the blues, um, blue is equal to the original uh, background color 3 of the button. Hold on, I just heard a sound. One sec. Uh, never mind. Okay, sorry. Um, then, <laughs> sorry, got a little sidetracked. So yeah, if the button background color 3 is equal to blue, then button dot background oops background color three equals red. Okay, so it's just gonna switch it. Otherwise we don't even we could say else button dot back background color three is equal to red, then set color to blue. But we don't need to do this because um, you know why. We don't even need to check the color. Just as long as it's not blue, it's going to change it back to blue. It's still going to work. It would even set it back to blue if it was green, but there's no way that the button could turn green because we're, we haven't told it to. Um, otherwise, button dot background color 3 equals red. I mean blue. <laughs> right. So, um, and then end and for the function. All right. So when we click the button, uh, it's gonna um, it's gonna check if it's blue. Uh, if the button is blue, then it's gonna change it to red. Otherwise, change it back to blue. I hope that makes sense. Now we actually have to check for the uh, for when it's clicked, and I can't remember exactly how to do that. Let me check. <laughs> so if you're if you're wondering um, if uh, what uh, like if you want to, okay. Well, how do I check this? All we have to do is go to ch uh, text button. Um, if you notice what I did, I went to help and then object browser. I explained this in one of my previous videos, but this shows all the things. So we just find text button, and if we scroll down here to the lightning bolts, these mean events. Okay, we're gonna find. Oh, look, there's. It's got mouse button one click, mouse button one down. Hmm, which one do we want to use? It doesn't matter. We can use whichever we, whichever one we want. Mouse button one is the left mouse button, by the way. Um, we can even do it for mouse button one up, but we're just going to do mouse button one click because we feel like it. So, um, button dot mouse button one click, and remember this is the exact same concept that I taught about when like Jimmy is touched or when Jimmy was clicked in my previous videos. So mouse button one click, uh, connect, as usual, you've seen this before, uh, change color. Now this should work just fine, and we can exit out of the object browser now that we don't need it anymore. Uh, let's press F6 to test it. It won't do anything if we test it just in the solo, so we actually have to play it first. Um, okay, we are here. Oh yeah, and we can still play with Jimmy. Woohoo! Looks like I'm not logged in. Oh well. <laughs> All right. If we click this, gonna change red, as expected. Click it again. Change to blue. I'm gonna right-click it. Doesn't do anything because uh, we could make it to do something if we right-clicked it, but I don't feel like it. So 
uh, we can just keep on clicking it between red and blue, which is really fun, <laughs> I think. Maybe if we click it fast enough, it'll look purple. No, I don't know. Yeah, uh, that works. Uh, maybe let's do one more, one more fun thing. Uh, what should we do now? We can let's let's make it alternate between another color. Okay, we're gonna say green equals color three dot new uh, zero um one zero because remember this the uh they're I think they're called they're they're called arguments in this case I'm pretty sure um the the middle one uh represents the green color you'd think it would represent yellow but um that's not how computers work they actually have green lights on your monitor they don't have yellow lights your um yeah i think the pixels are like made up of red green and blue leds i think <laughs> i don't know how they work i'm I, I don't even listen to me okay oh we we, we we're not done yet okay so we're gonna say green equals this color so now every time we say, um, by the way, the reason I, the reason I made these variables is so that we don't have to type color three dot new one zero zero every single time we want to get a red color. That's why we have these variables just to make things easy for ourselves. We don't have to do this, but we want to. That's the beauty of scripting. We can do whatever we want. So now that we're going to alternate between uh, three different colors, we actually do have to check if the button is red here. So we're going to say else. Um, by the way, I encourage you to go experiment with this idea, this whole idea yourself, um, uh, before watching me, just to, you know, practice. Um, so yeah, pause the video or something, go ahead. But I'm going to continue. Otherwise, um, if, or now we, well, now we have else if, so we just put else if. That's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Else if, uh, button dot background color 3 is equal to uh, red then um, by the way I should probably explain what I'm doing what we're just what we're just doing is uh, we're kind of extending what we've done here just a little bit uh, you'll see what I mean in a second um, just trust me on this then it's okay so if it's blue then it's gonna set to red if the color is red then it's gonna set to green if the color is green, so we have another else if. Actually, we can just do another else because we don't. It's not going to be any other color, so we can just say else uh, button dot background color uh, three. I was thinking I might have done something wrong, but I don't think I did. Uh, equals blue. Okay, it's going to set it back to blue. I'm pretty sure this will work. I'm going to test it and then explain one more time how the entire script works. If you understand how the script works already and you feel like you're ready to move on, go ahead. Um, I'm I, As of me recording this, I don't have the next video out yet, but if I do, uh, then go and check it out. Okay, so it's, it's blue, now it's going to turn to red. If it's red, it's going to turn to green. Since, um, since it's neither blue nor red, it's going to turn back to blue. Awesome. So it works just the way we want it to. We keep clicking between the colors, and it's joyful. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, be sure to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Um, I can do another follow-up video if I didn't explain this well enough, I guess. Uh, so yeah, uh, I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.